using these graphs. So um, I call this as a, a vector. Basically, if I have like one external leg, so basically the y index, I give it a leg. So this is a vector. If I have two uh, uh, external legs out of this object, I call this a matrix. Okay. So if I have three legs, it's a rank three tensor. So I put n, n indices, so I basically n, n legs. So does anybody know how do I represent scalar? Yes. This is a scalar. Okay. So how many legs means that how many indices? Okay. So this is rule number one. This, if you look at this in the next few slides, this is a tensor. And uh, you put two tensors together and you connect the line. Okay. Which means uh, this is the Einstein convention. I just contract them. Um, so, for example, this represents the uh, contraction between R matrix and S matrix, and I give a keep a new matrix to call Q. Um, so, what's this? So there's no external legs. So we know that the final result is is a is a scalar. Okay. And so this is a trace for tensors. And we can have different representation of so these are just uh, I contract this as a rent free tensor because I have <coughs> three external legs. And if you put those tensors together, these are the tensor network. Okay. This is a, a lot of my students see that we with this kind of diagrams. Okay. So this is uh, called MPS, it's PAPS, the three tensor network. Mera, branching Mera. So these are our, our tensor networks which we can use to represent a quantum state. And they are designed to satisfy the entanglement uh, entropy the area law. But don't worry, this is the end of this slide for now. So this is a, the, the model. Okay, this is not about the model, but what, what, what we want to study is this anti ferromagnetic quantum icing chain, spin chain, uh, with a uh, uh, apply longitudinal field and transverse field. Okay. Um, so I look very hard. But from, um, this might be a, a model system for, for uh, uh, a candidate system for this model. Um, so these are, um, so what you can ask is that if I have an anti ferromagnetic interaction, what kind of phase diagram do you have? And this is a phase diagram. Okay. If you have a ferrule, Okay. Then, uh, as soon as you apply the uh, a transverse, um, so okay, um, here I can sustain an anti ferromagnetic region. Okay. So this is a longitudinal field, okay. and. Uh, Gamma is an isotropic energy of... No, this is a transverse field. Oh, another field. Okay, so I have a spin chain, I apply transverse field and longitudinal field. So without this this term, it's just a classical IC model. Without this term, it's just a, a, a quantum IC model. We know that at 1D, the critical point is that uh, gamma equals to 1. So combine these two, then you can sustain a, 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 a region of anti ferromagnetic Netism, right? And you, you know the, the transition, and we can do with uh, we, 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 we can study with uh, using a uh, DMRG, which is a one D technique, and a quantum Monte Carlo simulation. What will happen if you add this second DNA and then become your third in cross-chain? Yes, <laughs> but one D. Um, Yeah, one D, you don't really have a geometrical frustration. Yeah. yeah but if you, you can have a second term, which is yeah, but anti-ferro. Yeah, yeah. 
because then you, you have a spider. You you have a, a, a anti you have a nail to some kind of uh, stripe state transition. That's another very interesting topic, and that model is so hard to simulate using classical model. Power. So we're trying other methods. So, but the question we want to ask is, uh, let me just disorder it. Okay. So I want to disorder the uh, interaction. I want to disorder the uh, the transverse field. But let's just keep this uh, longitudinal field um, uniform. Okay. Um, so the goal is we want to understand the disorder effect and see if there's a new kind of universality class uh, uh, will emerge or what's going to happen. Okay. Um, so in textbooks, we don't really learn much about disorder system. Yeah, especially the quench disorder systems, because they are really hard. Um, so, um, unfortunately, there's a, a, a method which is called a strong disorder uh, renormalization group. Um, so basically, uh, it's a it's, it's basically some kind of renormalization group, and you you basically you throw away high energy uh, stuff at few cost rate, and then will give you uh, 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 some properties, some fixed point properties of the uh, disorder quantum matrix system. Um, so for uh, disorder system, there in general you can two, have three three types of uh, RG fixed points. One is the so-called zero resonance. Okay, so basically, just when you call screen, this disorder strength basically just disappear. Um, uh, or that goes through a finite resonance. So basically, your dynamics becomes slower, but it doesn't really go to extremely slow. Okay. So it's finite resonance. And uh, there's another fixed point called infinite randomness uh, fixed point. Okay. So the relative strength basis goes to goes to goes to infinity, and the indication that you have an extremely 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 slow, slow dynamic. Um, so what's a strong disorder RG? So it's actually a, a, a very cool idea. Okay? So it's uh, proposed by Ma, Dan Gupta, and Hu, and who is a uh, Hu And this idea is say, okay, so if I have a random Heisenberg model, what I can do is I can do a, a decimation. So I scan through the bounds. I found the strong, so strongest bounds, okay? Because and this strongest bounds will force these two spins to form a singlet. Okay. So I can just throw away this, and I productively generate a, a effective interaction between these two two spins. So if I keep doing this, either that I'm left with a singlet, okay, or all my disorders are uh, are, are gone. So this is a this is a, a SDRG, and this decimation looks very simple, but it's actually exact if you have an infinite randomness fixed point. Um, so all this is done productively. What can do better? And by doing better, I mean that I can keep more states. Okay. So this is a, um, in this paper. You can think of this as uh, treating the spins as, uh, uh, as some block spins. So I diagonalize some local Hamiltonian, I find the largest gap, and then I cross grain it. Okay. So for example, if I have, this is my, uh, my block spins with the largest, uh, uh, largest uh, energy gap, so it means that I can throw away these things, because this, in the, in the lower energy scale, these things kind of frozen. So I can just uh, renormalize it such that I have a new um, new kind of uh, states, which is a mixture of this, and I truncate them, and I can get a new set of uh, blocks. Okay. Um, so this looks very complicated. Um, okay. Um, uh, so, 
just uh, skip this. So um, what, what this slide basically is any operator you can just write in terms of as 1D, you can write in terms of some matrix modification. And this is called a matrix product operator. Um, so for example, this is a matrix product operator for hyperbar model. Um, so um, in this paper, people realize that what I say this uh, block speed renormalization is actually just, you can think of it as a renormalization of this, these operators. Okay? So these are the operator will give you the Hamiltonian. And this will be just some renormalization, cost graining and truncation. And so these are the kind of RG process one can do. So you keep doing this until you have only one side left, and that's uh, your single side Hamiltonian or single block Hamiltonian, get a wave function. So if I order this um, in, in this way, okay, so these are my original matrix product operators, and these are the cross graining um, operators. And this looks like a tree. Okay, so this is a tree tensor network. So um, SDRG can be uh, thought of as a, 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 a tree tensor network. Okay, so these are our matrices, or um, so these are kind of tensors, and these are tensors. Okay, let's talk about physics. So the physics. Um, First, we want to do a synergy check, okay? Because it looks like a fancy uh, uh, method, and uh, especially the, the author who identified this say in their paper, this method should, couldn't directly apply in this model, okay? So we saw very hard for a month, and we couldn't figure out how to do it better. So we say, okay, let's just try it. And it turns out it works, okay? Um, so we know that there's a, a, a phase transition and from an anti ferromagnetic disorder, uh, and so even with disorder, there's an anti ferromagnetic transition to a, a ferromagnetic transition. And interesting thing, this is a critical point, it's a, it's a so-called random singlet phase. Okay? Um, so basically, this is an infinite randomness fixed point. So we can do a lot of uh, standard uh, uh, calculation. For example, we can calculate binder cumulant, okay, and uh, disorder. So we can identify actually, yeah, this a uh, phase transition. Okay, this uh, I mean the quality of this uh, doesn't look as good as a clean system, but um, because of this disorder system, we have to do uh, thousands of uh, sample relation of the uh, average. Okay. So basically, just this around a thousand times. What can we use to increase the length of your chain? Uh, I think that can be done, but this is done by my master student PPD. So this fixed one doesn't look uh, very clear. Yeah, yeah, so this crossing actually um, but that's why we did this interpolation. But this is not um, the most important part. <coughs> the important part is all this, uh, um, this distribution. Okay, for example, this is the distribution of the energy gap, the ground state to first desired gap. Um, so what I'm comparing here is from our calculation. And this is a, a classical calculation. Because this model without longitudinal field can be mapped to a, a disorder free fermion model. And free fermion, you can basically diagonalize a very large system. Okay? And so, and you see, this is a very different calculation. And you basically, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, even the numbers can match. Okay? Um, the scaling behavior looks exactly the same. Um, there are other quantities, uh, I'm not gonna explain, but this end to end correlation function is also another very important quantity. Um, looks the same, okay? Um, I get a critical scaling. So I can even get the, um, uh, I didn't show here, but we get the, 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 the basically, we can get the analytical results. 
So that shows that this method works even when the original author says it doesn't work. We can jump in and try. We are lucky. But this is not our purpose. We want to study something new. Okay? So we want to add a longitudinal field. Okay? So we want to see what's the fate of this anti ferromagnetic phase and what's the fate of this infinite resonance fixed point. Okay? I just add a small uh, longitudinal field. And this is kind of uh, depressing, but it turns out I, I had a very small field. So this is the original phase, uh, 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 phase boundary. I had a very small longitudinal field. All my stagger metallization, so this order parameter gets squashed, becomes zero. So this anti parameter order destroyed by a small longitudinal field. And uh, this is the spindle cumulant. Okay? Um, so if you look at this spindle cumulant here, spindle cumulant gives you the where the transition occurs. Okay? And this is sort of gives you a, a, a ballpark value of where the transition occurs. But by adding a small field, then we don't have any thing. Okay? So we found a way to destroy this, uh, this field. And that destroy this uh, anti ferromagnetic phase. And this also destroy this uh, infinite random fixed point. Okay? Um, at this, at the, this fixed point, the um, so called dynamical uh, critical exponents should diverge. But um, here, we looked at data, and basically, I can get a finite uh, dynamical exponent. So, yeah. So basically, this is the, this part of the story. Um, so we basically use a, a, a SDRG disguise in a, a communication network. Um, we managed to destroy this infinite resonance fixed point. And actually, this is actually not an a, a easy test, because um, this term basically, in all these integral systems, is, is actually very hard to prove. But this term basically breaks the integral with this good. And the more interesting thing is that if, if we can extend these uh, ideas, the same form with the similar form into a higher dimension, there'll be a lot of interesting questions that we can, one can ask. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is uh, one of the papers that we are preparing. This work was done with the photo um, chain, as you can said, efficiently. Okay. Um, so we have uh, a couple other things going on. Okay, so uh, I still have five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So I want to. So these are the the uh, the, the physics that I, I I talked about, but I want to take some time to discuss um, some of the uh, toolboxes that we've been using our world building. Okay. Um, so this is the outlook. So basically the, the, the question is, where does the future lie? What's the future can feel? And my personal bias is this tensor network. Okay. Um, so if you look at this, just consider yourself as a, a first year graduate student. And your thesis advisor asks you, let's program this. Get it done in. 10 days. Okay. And you just, you, you fire your thesis advisor. Okay. So that's the reason why we think okay. everybody in the uh, power pool. So if you want to program this, right, you have to bookkeeping. This is a, this is already, if you try to program this, it's not so difficult, but it's already, already tedious. And in interesting cases like fermions, you have to worry about if I swap to uh, uh, particles, you have to pick up a minus sign. Okay? And we also want to study anions. So you, 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 you break two particles, then you pick up a phase and non symmetries and all that. Okay. These are very similar to logic circuits. 
so actually, this uh, this is basically this is kind of initially was proposed by Peros, the so called Peros diver, and recently uh, somebody told me this is also uh, there's some similarity of the tension level with with the with, the, um, with an diver. So uh, a hot topic in tension network nowadays is, is, is the holography and tension network. I think some of you will tell you more about this. So, and uh, we want to squeeze every juice, like a last, every last juice out of our, our computer. So, but not everybody wants to do programming. So what to do? We, we cannot just uh, ask the students to spend all this time to optimize the code. Okay. We want to do some interesting physics. So this is what so this is the current situation. So you have this nice hardware, you have these low level libraries. And you have this thing that you, these tons of algorithms that we want to program. But you can take your favorite language, you know, listening to your MATLAB plus plus or shape Python. Anything. And you can directly uh, program this, okay? And if you do this, at some point you want to kill yourself. Okay? So this is where we come in. We build a, a, a middleware we call the unit chain. Um, we want to simplify this stuff, okay? So um, I don't have a code as much as me. The, the very complicated uh, network is in using our library, you can program in less than 100 lines. Okay. So it, it can be done within 10 days. I think the, the hard part is the physics that you have to understand. Okay. And recently, the tensor computation has become so important, okay, a lot of uh, new ideas from applied math actually are, are coming in. And so I'm, I'm organizing with a friend at Simon's Foundation so the, about this uh, tensor computation. So um, if you're interested, you can check out this, uh, this website, this is our, our, um, our uh, library website. Okay. <coughs> so these are the, 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 some of the features. Um, it's open source, it's P uh, LGPL. We need some, anybody who's interested who can call, please help us. And it's, please focus, focus, focus on, 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 on GitHub. Okay. And uh, this tensor can be very useful. Um, I've been talking to a, we've been talking to a, a guy at uh, Recan. He's doing this uh, brain research, and there's a lot of applied math people are, are thinking about this. Uh, how to say you have big data, and you want to compress the data using tensors. So you want all this tensor comp decomposition becomes very important. Another thing I want to mention is, uh, is the machine learning. Okay, so this AI or machine learning has been pretty hard recently. But the interesting thing is that in the past year, a couple of um, application of this uh, this uh, machine learning uh, ideas have been used in quantum many body uh, physics. Okay, um, so uh, so I I Google this. So basically, I did a search two days ago. Um, so this is only for 2016 and 17. There's only already 80 something papers. We try to use uh, uh, machine learning tools to look at, uh, um, look at uh, the many body systems. Okay. But um, so here is a slide I stole from my friend. So these are the, the ideas in machine learning. And uh, this is in particular like this uh, so-called restricted Boltzmann machine. So basically, this is just a, a, a icing model in another incarnation. Okay. So we have this uh, visible layer and a hidden layer, and they interact through. These are the icing spins, and they interact with some couplings, and uh, you train these couplings. Um, there are these different ideas, and people have you use this to identify phase transitions and to study some other things. Okay. Um, but a lot of this is 
things are actually, we already know the result. It's just uh, some, we use a, a, a new tool to kill the same cow that way. But there's a, 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 a big progress trying to um, do this material science, trying to predict where the material, how, how, how should I put it? So basically, where to look for new, new materials. Um, so, but what I'm trying to argue is that we have been using tensor neighbor to simulate all these quantum systems. And recently, or not so recently, people have been feedback using this feedback to to machine learning. Okay, um, a lot of complaint, at least my complaint for machine learning is that you you can um, you you need to train your machine. Okay, so you, you not every everyone can do AI, but to do good AI, you need a good trainer. Okay, um, so this in principle still your 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 black box, and we hope that maybe there's a connection between these two, and that can help us uh, understand a bit more. Okay, not only apply this method to to physics, physics can be bad. So let me just give you uh, some. One quick snapshot example. So this is a, 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 a deep convolution network. So basically, this can be used as a as a. Um, so for example, in this case, it's a, a, a face recognition to uh, to classify different things. Okay. Um, so if I flip this, and so if I look at structure, this is one of my favorite uh, uh, tensor network. Okay. So there's series of similarities. Okay, so I've been thinking about this, and I was searching, and it turns out last month somebody already did this. So they found a, a, at least for one of the t network, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. They can write down the, the function. Okay. So in a in, in a sense that we can use tensor network to help machine learning and vice versa. Okay, so this is very exciting. Um, so, let me just try to demo. So here is a, 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 a demo, okay? So basically, we train a, a convolution network with the different temperature data. Okay, so I, I spit in the image, and I train the, as the neurons. Then, then I take these neurons and I give it a, a, a configuration and see if the neuron can predict the, the temperature. Okay. So here's the simulation. So basically what you're going to see is that you'll see an image. Okay. And here what shows this red line here will be the, the, real, the uh, real temperature such that this configuration is generated. And there will be a probability distribution, okay? And the peak will, peak, peak will, will be our, our prediction. So, so I already trained the neuron. The, the most difficult part is to, to train the neuron. It takes forever. So I, I, I store, I, well, my student did, I didn't do it. So we took the, the neuron data and I store it on my computer. And now I feed the data to the to neuron. So this is the first snapshot. Okay, so this is the last snapshot. Okay, so you see that sometimes this gives some error. Okay, for example, this is a, a, a very big deviation. Okay, and this one, okay. Yeah, this is the order state, so it's actually easier, but very close to the phase transition point is actually difficult. So high temperature and low temperature region give you a reason, reasonable prediction. Okay, so uh, again, this blue line is just a probability of um, this temperature will occur. Okay, and this is the real, real uh, data, real temperature. Okay, so for example, this one is just a 100% correct. Okay. Um, so what we are aiming to do is, so this is just classification, not big deal. What we want to do is that see if 